Hello students, this lecture is on connective tissue. Uh, we're still in uh, chapter 4 of the book. There, uh, connective tissue is very abundant in the body, and there are four classes of connective tissue. We have what is called connective tissue proper. We have cartilage. We have bone tissue. Bone is a connective tissue. And blood as well. Blood is a connective tissue. The, think, re remember that blood cells are form formed in the bone marrow in the marrow of the bones, and so that's how they fit into being a connective tissue. Looking at these, again, just talking about that, here's connective tissue proper, and we have several different types of connective tissue, but it's primarily organized into what is called loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Here we have cartilage, and we'll look at three different types of cartilage. We also have bone tissue, and we have a whole chapter on bone coming up after, uh, soon after we talk about the skin. And then finally, here are the blood cells. Remember, blood cells are a connective tissue as well. Key functions of connective tissue, binding and support. Think of the bones. Think of tendons and ligaments. We have binding and support as a main function of connective tissue. Connective tissue also has a protective function. Certainly, your rib cage surrounding your internal organs, critical internal organs, such as your heart and lungs. Insulation. We're going to find that fat, fat tissue, adipose tissue, is a connective tissue. And so that has an insulative, insulative function. And finally, transportation. You know, the red, the red blood cells are involved, are involved in transporting the oxygen and CO2 in and out of the body. Two uh, general characteristics of connective tissue. One, they have limited vascularity. So that's why when you, when you, you have a, uh, a strain or a sprain and you damage your ligaments or tendons, uh, they, they heal very slowly, if really at all. In fact, what tends to happen is you form scar tissue. And then number two, all cells, these are connective tissues, they contain cells that, uh, is, that are surrounded by uh, a non-living extracellular matrix. And you think about bone. You know, bone, in the case of bone, there are cells in the bone but the vast majority of bone is a matrix. It's a calcified matrix formed out of calcium and, and various uh, proteins. Let's continue to take a look at the, the structure, the kind of the overall structure of connective tissue. There's three key things that make up connective tissue. One is this ground substance or the matrix, that extracellular matrix. Two are the fibers. And then the third thing are the cells. Let's take a look at these. The ground, mat the, the ground substance, the matrix, this is a gel-like substance, and it has varying degrees of hardness. So for example, your connective tissue has much less hardness than your bone, but they both have this extracellular matrix. And in that matrix, there is interstitial fluid, there are proteins, there are proteoglycans. Proteoglycans are protein sugar compounds. And then in the bone, you add to that something called hydroxyapatite, which is a calcium phosphate mineral. The fibers include collagen, fibers, what are called elastic fibers, and also reticular fibers. And the fibers in the extracellular matrix, that's what gives connective tissue its strength. And it can give its connective tissue its elasticity and in some cases, give it a connective tissue almost a, uh, give it a net-like effect, or a filtration-like effect. And we'll look at, we'll look at those, those different types of fibers in different types of connective tissue. And then very importantly, the last structural element of connective tissue are the cells. Connective tissue is a living tissue. Your, bone, your bones are living tissue. Your bone is alive. In fact, about every week, you replace about 7% of your bone mass. And the key cells that we'll be looking at in connective tissue, number one, are the mesenchymal cells. And these are the original stem cells found in the embryo. And from these stem cells, are from the mesenchymal cells, which is a stem cell, are derived all the other different connective cells, including the fibroblasts. And the fibroblasts are a cell that makes connective tissue. We have chondroblasts and chondrocytes. Chondroblasts, they make cartilage. Chondrocytes maintain cartilage. And then finally, we have osteoblasts and osteocytes. And osteoblasts make bone, 
and osteocytes maintain bone. Chondrocytes and osteocytes are essentially mature versions of chondroblasts and osteoblasts. These four cells, these four cell types, you'll, you'll need to know them and you'll need to know what each cell does. One thing that you will find in this course as we get further into it is that over and over again, you're going to need to know certain cells and what those cells do. A good example, when we get into the skin, you'll need to know the cell types, keratinocytes and melanocytes and what they do. When we get into the muscles, you'll have to understand the, the muscle cell. And we'll go into the muscle cell in great depth and understand how the muscle cell works. If you understand how the cell works, then, you'll under, then from there we'll work up into the whole body and we'll understand how the whole body works. But modern day physiology is, is worked at at the cellular and molecular level. So you'll need to know these four cells. Looking at that one more time then, what forms, what forms connective tissue? What are the three elements? One, we have cells. Here are several cells, the fibroblast, the macrophage, the lymphocyte. We have fibers. We have these various collagen, elastic, reticular fibers. So you can see the fibers in this figure. And then finally, in the background, we have this ground substance, the extracellular matrix. And so once again, connective tissue is formed of the extracellular matrix, also known as the ground substance, it's formed of fibers, and it's formed of cells. So let's play the same, let's play the same game or the same thinking that we play with epithelial tissue. Connective tissue, just like epithelial tissue, its structure is related to its function. And an example of this would be the connective tissue found on the skin has a very different structure than the connective tissue found in the testes or uh, found in the, uh, the tendons. For example, the connective tissue under the skin it has a large number of elastic fibers that are arranged in a lot of random directions. And that allows the skin to be very stretchy and to stretch in all sorts of different ways. Whereas the connective tissue in tendons is composed of collagen fibers. Collagen fibers have a lot of strength and those fibers are very densely packed and they're all arranged in a particular linear order. And that allows the tendon to have a lot of strength in one particular direction, in the, in the direction that the joint is moving. Let's continue to look at that. Again, we're going to be looking at loose versus dense connective tissue first. We will start off with uh, loose connective tissue, areolar connective tissue. Notice that the, it has elastic fibers and collagen fibers that are widely spaced. And, move, and, and organized in all sorts of random directions. This is the, uh, the connective tissue. It's widely distributed under the epithelial tissue of the body. So wherever you have an epithelial tissue, underneath that is this loose connective tissue. And that helps to give the epithelial tissue some strength and also gives that epithelial, the epithelial tissue elasticity. Here we have a loose connective tissue, adipose tissue. As I told you earlier, fat, fat tissue, fat cells, are connective tissue cell. Fat is connective tissue. Often found underneath the skin, it has an insulative effect. Here is loose connective tissue, reticular loose connective tissue. In this case, the connective tissue, it looks like it forms like branches. It's forming almost like a, a net. It's, it's kind of open, kind of widely spaced. Uh, not as widely spaced as the, uh, the loose connective tissue areolar found underneath the skin. This connective tissue is primarily found in lymph organs. And it, again, its fibers kind of form like a tree-like branch-like structure. And in this case, those fibers, they are acting in the lymph to be able to trap foreign particles, foreign invaders, such as trapped bacteria. And then by trapping bacteria, that allows the macrophages to go and destroy those bacteria. So in this case, we find a lot of macrophages, and we find these reticular fibers, again, to trap, trap microorganisms and then have the macrophages attack and kill those microorganisms. Here is the dense connective tissue regular. No, this is, this, in this case, these are collagen fibers. They're very tightly packed together. They're all arranged in one direction. This is the kind of connective tissue that's found in tendons and ligaments. It gives a lot of strength. 
It gives a lot of strength in a particular direction with limited elasticity. Classic example of structure related to function. Here is denser regular connective tissue. Again, where it's primarily composed of collagen fibers. Notice also it has the cells in there, the fibroblasts. This is another type of tissue. It has a lot, it has a lot of strength, a lot of tension. It's not arranged in such a it, it's not a, it's arranged in a little more random of a fashion. It's it's not arranged in just one linear straight line. It's a little more random. This is also found in joints. And, uh, it's often found in joints and allows for uh, for strength, for tension, but allows for strength and tension in multiple directions. Here is elastic dense connective tissue. In this case, elastic fibers are forming this uh, connective tissue, and as you might expect. This connective tissue is very elastic. It can stretch and it can recoil. One place that we find uh, this connective tissue is in the aorta. When the heart is pumping blood initially out into the aorta, the aorta, expa uh, the aorta is elastic and it expands and then recoils and that smooths out the blood flow to the cardiovascular system. And So we find a lot of this elastic dense connective tissue in the aorta to give that aorta, uh, the aorta, that major blood vessel coming out of the heart, to give it an elastic and a recoil effect. Now let's look at cartilage, three main types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. We'll look at hyaline cartilage first. Hyaline cartilage, hyaline cartilage we'll find when we get to the bones is a very important cartilage. Initially when the embryonic skeleton is formed, the embryonic skeleton is completely made of hyaline cartilage. And then that hyaline cartilage will undergo ossification and turn into bone as, as the uh, fetus matures from two months up to nine months. So hyaline cartilage is very important in the embryo and ultimately in uh, bone development. In the, uh, in the adult, we find that hyaline cartilage in the coastal cartilages of the ribs. Uh, a lot of matrix in this cartilage. Uh, and then, of course, uh, chondrocytes. Chondrocytes are found in this cartilage. Chondrocytes have the ability, they're, they're cells that make cartilage. Here's elastic cartilage. Um, this is a cartilage, the, the classic example of this, this is found in the external ear. It also has a lot of elasticity. Uh, it allows the, the maintenance of the shape, but still is flexible. And then finally we have fibrocartilage. In the case of fibrocartilage, we have a, a lot of a collagen fibers, um, less matrix, that allows, us, that allows this particular cartilage to have a lot of strength, but it also allows uh, the absorption of shock. The absorption of, uh, it's able to compress and resist compression. A classic example where we find that is in the intervertebral disc between the vertebrae. And so it allows for a certain degree of stretch, but it also resists compression. It acts as a shock absorber. Now just a few more uh, connected tissue types. One is bone. We'll talk about bone in detail, but notice bone has a very, uh, in this case, in bone, the matrix is hard. The, ma the matrix has become calcified. And the, uh, the bone has a very uh, unique structure. It has kind of like this, these kind of structural units called osteon, tree-like structures, or uh, ring-like, tree-ring-like structures. And within the center of that are canals that allow for passage of blood vessels and nerves. And then the osteocytes, the bone cells, are intermixed uh, in, in that bone tissue. And then finally, the blood cells. Both red and white blood cells are connected, can, uh, considered connected tissue. Again, we'll discuss those blood, the blood cells in detail uh, next semester when we get into the cardiovascular system. And their main function is transportation. And that is the connective tissue of the body. Thank you.